Zero Accounting Software 2023 Pay Bill Form. Get ready because it's time to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the new company file we set up in a prior presentation, that being Get Great Guitars. We're gonna Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. I'm gonna duplicate some tabs to put reports in by going to the tab up top and right clicking on it to duplicate it. And then we're gonna right click on that duplicate a tab to duplicate it again. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the middle, accounting drop down, look at the balance sheet report, one of the major financials tab, and then to the right, accounting drop down again, this time the income statement. Let's go back to the tab to the right so we can change that date range, hitting the drop down to do so, custom range, and we want to be in 2023. That's where our home is on this range, 2023 uh, uh, end of the year, and then update it and then tab to the right and we look good on the date range here. So let's go back to the first tab and now we're gonna enter a pay bill type of form. In other words, we're imagining bills have been entered in the past. We actually entered the bill in the past, but we did so as part of our beginning balance type of process. So we have a bill that has been created and now we're thinking about paying off the bills. Now, before we do that, let's take a quick look at our flow chart. This is a QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but we're just looking at the flow of the cycle, which is a general accounting flow. We're focusing in the vendor cycle, which you can think of as the expenses cycle or purchases cycle, where at the end of the cycle, whether using a cash based system or accrual based system, we expect money to be going out of the business for the purchase of goods and services normally classified as expenses, those things we had to consume in order to help us to generate the related revenue. So there's two ways we have to be paying off our normal bills. Many small businesses are often going to be using a cash based type of system. And you might be able to connect that up with the bank feeds because many of the payments we make these days are electronic payments, which usually means the bank feed information has enough detail for us to add it as the payments go through. So we can then say the payments are clearing the banks, which are basically kind of like a check type form or a money out form, apply the appropriate expense account and record the expenses as the cash flow happens. However, in some cases when we're trying to manage our money a little bit more tightly and oftentimes is necessary as companies get larger, we might want to be entering the bills into the system, bills being a specific term within a zero uh, accounting software system. They don't necessarily, they don't just mean the bill that you've received in terms of a paper bill or email. They mean that when you enter the bill form into the system, you're increasing accounts payable. So if you pay off a bill that in layman's term, a bill, if you pay off just a bill with a check, then the bill isn't really a bill for zero terminology because you didn't enter it into the system as a bill and never increased it accounts payable. You just paid it off with a check form. So the bill is a form within the zero system which increased the accounts payable. Now the bills are, are gonna be necessary to track accounts payable if we're trying to tighten up our cash flow and most likely with larger businesses you're trying to pay as late as possible and remember that doesn't really matter too much if you're a small business because you might say if i pay 15 days early as long as i have the cash flow it's not a big deal but if you're dealing with large transactions and or many transactions paying 15 days early just because of the time value of money could could actually become a big deal so it becomes a big deal to try to pay as late as possible on the payment structures and then tracking your accounts payable more closely becomes more and more important. 
So now we're, we're going to imagine the bills are in place and we're going to enter the pay. We're going to pay the bill. Now, when we pay the bill, it's just a money out form, which is like a which is like a money out or a check kind of form. But the it's going to be specific in that when we're paying these payments out, decrease in the checking account, the other side's not going to an expense account. It's going to be decreasing the accounts payable account and it's going to be decreasing uh, the sub ledger breaking out accounts payable by vendor. All right, so let's go back on over just to see what we're talking about. If I go to the balance sheet here and we go down to the liabilities, we've got our accounts payable, 15,000. We put that on the books with a beginning balance type of entry. So we didn't actually enter a bill per se for new transactions in 2023. We'll put that on the books from beginning transactions. If I go to the tab to the right, and duplicate the tab again, we could see that we could support that information with a sub ledger in a similar fashion as we do with accounts receivable, accounting dropdown, reports, and then we're gonna go down to the payables and receivables and let's just look at the, uh, the aged payable summary. Aged payable summary, it's aged like a fine wine. So here we have it. And there's the 15,000. Now we only have one person here, so it's a pretty boring report or one vendor uh, that we have to pay. And there's the 15,000. But the point is that the accounts payable report would be broken out by vendor who we owe the money to. And the total should tie out to what's on the balance sheet over here, which is why when you enter anything to the accounts payable, zero will often uh, force you to enter a vendor so that that sub ledger will tie out. All right, if I go back to the first tab, we can also see that information. If I go to the business drop down and we go to the pay bills area, this is typically where we would be sorting our bills and managing the bills. We have all the bills. We've got the drafts. We've got the awaiting approval. We've got the awaiting payment. So these are the bills that went out that are awaiting payment. It looks much like our report that we set up, except there's no total here. So this is where you usually go internally to sort the bills that you need to pay. But it's important to understand that the sum of all these outstanding bills should in essence match up to what is on the balance sheet in accounts payable. You could also go to your contacts dropdown and go to your uh, suppliers. And so these are the contacts that you owe money to. And then there is the bill there. If I go into that particular uh, supplier, I can see the details. So if, if I had a question with a particular uh, uh, supplier, I might then go directly into uh, that, that supplier and look at the activity that has happened thus far with them. So I'm gonna go back on over. I'm gonna imagine we usually go into the pay bills and we would be managing the bills we need to pay. I'm going to go to the awaiting payment over here. Now, obviously, we only have one transaction in here, so it's somewhat boring. And the second month, we're going to do more of our ending transactions that we paid on a cash basis system this, this month. And we'll enter those as bills and then pay them in the second month. So this month, we did more transactions that are cash based. And next month, we'll do some more transactions that are a little bit more accrual based, including these uh, payments that we make at the end of the month. We'll enter them as bills and then pay them so we can see this in a little bit more detail with more than one transaction in it. But usually if there's a lot of transactions, if you're at a, a mid to smaller, uh, larger company, you might have a bunch of stuff in here and then you could sort by the date. You, you have the, uh, the date type, transaction date, uh, due date, and the plan date. So, and, and then uh, you've got the add plan date, uh, make a payment. So then you can select them. If you're going to be paying off multiple of them, you can select multiple of them and then go back up top and say, uh, make payment or add a planned date that you're going to be making a payment. If I go into here, note also, I can go into this particular bill and you also have the make payment down below. So you could do it this way and assign a check to it, or, or if you so choose, or if you want to do it, I think it would be usually most people would probably go over here. And then if you want to assign multiple items, you could do it from here or just choose the one that we have. And then we're going to make the payment, make the payment. It's going to come out of uh, pay by check or batch payment. 
Now, this is kind of interesting because you record a payment for multiple bills. So you might have uh, one payment for multiple bills that you can make a batch payment for. So that's a kind of interesting uh, tool that you can have there that you can put into play. Otherwise, you would say pay by check. I'm going to say pay by check, create and print check. I'm going to say continue. And so here it is. Uh, if now if we were actually uh, printing the checks, we'd have to you know put the physical checks in the printer and so on and so forth. If you don't have an actual check and you're paying it electronically, but you're using this system to do so, then maybe you could remove you know the check number here if it was electronic. What's this going to do when you record it? It's going to decrease uh, the checking account, and the other side's going to go into the accounts payable. Now notice what we probably purchased with this Epiphone because that's our vendor to purchase guitars was inventory. We had purchased inventory, but anytime we're paying off the accounts payable, we know that we're not actually going to go to the expense account or the asset account in this case of inventory for the thing we actually purchased in this particular transaction, because the other side of the transaction is always going to be decreasing the accounts payable. If I want to look at what we actually purchased, I have to go to the original bill form. The bill form is going to be when we increase the accounts payable and the other side goes to the expense, or in this case, most likely we purchase the inventory. So let's go ahead and save it and check it out. We'll save it and check it out. So let's go back on over to the balance sheet here, if I may, and update it. And then we're going to check out the checking because that's always a good place to go. There's always good times, a lot of activity, a lot of stuff going on in the checking account. So we like to go there from time to time and check things out, see what's in, see what's in the happening, see what's happening. So here's the pay, uh, the payment amount. Notice that we have a different description here than a spend money in terms of the source, which is nice because that's an indication in and of itself that the other side of the transaction is gonna to go to accounts payable. And then if you wanna see what we actually purchased, again, you have to go to the bill as opposed to the spend money form where the other side of the transaction is usually an expense or asset, uh, most likely an expense, sometimes an asset. So if I go into this one again, so there we have it. If we needed to edit it, we've got our options up top to well you got you got the print and edit send and so on and mark as reconciled and so on and so forth here so there we have it and then i'm going to go back on over and let's go to the other side move on over to the other side and that's also on the balance sheet and then that's going to be in the accounts payable which is gone right now because we closed it down to zero so accounts payable has disappeared it's off the it's off the charts uh, but if i go to my aging i can see that i can update it here and then it disappears once again no accounts payable because uh, we paid off all of the accounts payable which is great we don't have that debt hanging over our heads anymore and then we're going to go to the first tab and now in the awaiting payments I'm in the bills area. Uh, if I go to the banking, we're in the bills and we're in awaiting payments. Nothing's in it anymore because we paid it. If I go to the paid area, there's the amount there that was paid. That's great. If I go to the contacts up top and I look at my, let's just go to all contacts and then I'm gonna go down to Epiphone. Epiphone is epic. And then scrolling down so now we've got our our bill up top there's the one it says it's paid because it's been paid so again if you want to view it i can hit the drop down and view it and which is nice that they put it all in one place here because then you could you could see that it's been paid and then if you go into the actual bill you could see what we what was uh purchased and here we put it in uh, a beginning balance account so we just put it uh directly into their uh but again, we'll spend more time entering bills in the future because when you pay the bill, again, you pay the bill, it's going to go decrease in the accounts payable account. Yeah, because we just put it right into equity. All right, so that's the general idea. We'll talk more about bills and paying bills in the second month of operations. Let's take a look at our trial balance now. Tab into the right, and I'm going to go to the accounting dropdown and go into our reports. 
reports and let's take a look at the trial balance trial balance the balance is on trial and we'll see what happens here with the trial balance we're going to go to the customer date and 2023 see if we got an honest jury on this trial for the balance we're going to say there it is so if your numbers tie out that's great if not try to change the range if you were tied out last time and you're following along then if there's something off this time you would expect it would either be the checking account and or the accounts payable uh account uh, the accounts payable down to zero here notice that the trial balance is nice because sometimes it gives you that zero because of this prior balance in the prior year and that allows you to drill down on it even though it has a zero balance otherwise you'd have to go you can go into the general ledger report and still kind of look at the detail but uh it's nice to sometimes internally have the zero amounts if there was activity in it so you can drill down and see the data in the system and you can see what happens with the accounts payable it's going to go up with a bill form let's bring it back uh the beginning date to 2022 just so you could see that uh hold on a second it didn't do it didn't do it there we go so it goes it goes up with a bill uh or a pay a payable invoice uh, a bill and then it goes down when we make the payment that's what we expect to happen in all the time in the accounts payable it goes up and then it goes back down again all right i'm going to go back on over to our trial balance because we're trying to just check our numbers here and i keep on babbling uh I, more so there it is so if you tie out great if not try changing the date range if something changes then drill down on the source document and change the date